Okay, so this movie we're going to show you how to add the VB code to a details view so that we don't have to add the primary key. So uh, we don't have to add the primary key ourselves. So first thing I'm going to do is go and turn that off to display the primary key. So I'll go in here to edit fields. I'll choose ID and then down here we've turned this on before but I'm going to turn it off. Well, actually, right. So with this insert visible true for ID, I'm going to actually make that false so we don't show it anymore. And then what I'm going to do is go and grab the VB code so that, that the code will automatically add that primary key for us. And that code's out here on the O drive in the CS218 folder. And it's this one, this adding primary key code. If you just double click, it'll open that up in Visual Web Developer. It's, I, I'm pretty sure it's associated with Visual Web Developer for you. Let's see, did it get it? Okay, so it got it over here in Visual Web Developer. And if you read the comments in that file, it tells you where to, to copy and paste these things. So I want to copy and paste them into the VB code associated with this ASPX file. So mine's called delete me. So I'm going to go and find delete me.aspx.vb. And again, the way I find that is over here in the Solution Explorer. Find the ASPX file. If you click on the plus by it, you'll see the VB file. I'll double click that guy to open him. And so I see I've got, a, you know, it gives you a little bit of code for free. But now I want to copy and paste from this file and put things in the right places. And again, it tells you that it has this one has to go at the start of the file before the partial class statement. So I'll copy this, come over here before the partial class statement, paste that in. And then I'm going to go back here and grab the rest of it. I'll come and copy this. And again, it kind of tells you up here hey, this needs to go between the inherit and the end class statements in this file. So when I come over to paste it, so between this inherit and between this end class, I'm going to paste it in here. Okay. So I, now I have the code over here. I have to modify a couple things. The first one is up here where it says which database are you pointing at? And I can go and look at my database explorer. So the first thing here is what's the name of your database file? So I really don't need to change this since I changed it yesterday, but it's classes.mdb. And then the next thing is which table do we want to point at inside there? So I'll open this up and look at my tables if I can't remember the table name, but in this case, mine's instructors. So if yours is not instructors, change your table name down here. And then what's the name of the field I want to get? ID. So that's within this instructor's table. Which field do I want to get? It's, it's not case sensitive, apparently. I could change this to be get the ID field. So if you called your primary key something other than ID, then change this one to match that. So that gets me to the right database, the right table, and the right field to make the query. And what this code does again, it goes out, queries the database, and says, hey, what's the highest ID that you have in there? Then the code adds one to that, then adds that to the insert statement. So when we try to insert a new record, it says, when you insert this new record, I want to use this new ID, which is one plus whatever the maximum was before. This would be one higher. You don't have to change any of this code. This is again where we pretty much add one well, we make the query, we add one to the existing number, wh which we do right here. The one other thing you might have to change is in your access data source. If yours is not called access data source one, if it's access data source two, or if you change to say instructor data source, something like that, make that match. Most of the time we're not changing that access data source name, so let's leave it alone. So after we have this, save the code, now when you run it, oh, I got the home page instead. 
uh, I want to. You notice I tried to run this file, the VB file. The, um, your website's set up to say if you run a file that can't run, it's going to run the default file. That's why I got that one. So here, I'll run the correct file, this delete me.aspx. I'll say add a new record. And you notice now I don't see the ID field here. I turn that off. Let's add a new one in here. Last name, Smith, Joe. Say insert. And now if we go and look, it added in any notes. We didn't get the error. And if we look out here, it added in and had an ID of six. We can add one more. Say insert. And if we go and look at that new one, it just it uh, you know it, it incremented it for us. So again, if you don't want to have to worry about that, you can add this code. If you don't want to add the code, then what you need to do again is go back here, talk to Rob, do the edit fields, choose the ID field, insert visible, set that to true. And then when you you have to keep track of what the maximum is yourself and add one to it every time you add a new record. So it's up to you, one or the other, but you got to handle that some way. Otherwise, access is going to throw an error every time you try to add a new record.